At one time, there were dinosaurs in Indiana, but their remains were scraped away by huge moving sheets of ice called glaciers. Now the only dinosaur bones you'll find are here in the Dinosphere at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis. However, glaciers did grant us access to the layers below that contain fossils of the earliest life on Earth. To learn more, we visited with Dallas Evans, who had some interesting fossils to show us. So Dallas, we're here back at the museum, and we've just spent a long time on dinosaurs. There's no dinosaurs here, but Indiana has some pretty special fossils. Do you agree? We have some pretty spectacular things in the state, yep. What do you have here to show us today? Well, when we dig dinosaurs, what we dig are things that are 65 million years old. In Indiana, we have a lot of things that are 300 million years old plus. So all these are Paleozoic fossils, far older than dinosaurs that we dig. All from Indiana, lovely things like this Isotelus trilobite. This comes from Madison, Indiana. Mm -hmm. And also from Madison, Indiana, is this little Flexi Calamity trilobite. This gorgeous little Paleozoic creatures. We also have brachiopods, that are basically shell fossils from Indiana. Gastropods or snail fossils. This looks just like a snail in our backyard. So these are very similar then, I guess. But very similar. Um, you could pick one up and it's hardly distinguished from one in your backyard. These, however, are marine specimens, so they're, they're ocean animals. 300 million years ago, Indiana was at the bottom of a shallow ocean. It was this ocean and its sea life that created the limestone deposits that Indiana is known for today. And within this limestone is a fossil that Indiana is famous for around the world. If you're in Indiana, this is what you want to look for. They're uh -huh. beautiful specimens. They're called crinoids. Um, they used to be called sea lilies, but that's a bit of a misnomer. They're not really plants. They kind of look like plants, mm -hmm. but it's actually, well, essentially a starfish with a stalk. It's an echinoderm, and it's a filter feeder. This little this little head would kind of open up and filter feed. So this guy is kind of on a stalk and, is, and it, it, the head of it, or the calyx, is, that, mm -hmm. is a filter feeder. So most people would see this, they would think, oh, that's a plant or something. But actually, it's an echinoderm, which is an animal, because it has the ability to move. Now, um, most of the time when I've been out with kids, we find pieces of these that look like little bitty Cheerios. And, okay. such. Mm -hmm. and so what part is that on this? That's actually a stem section. Uh -huh. These are actually very, I don't know another word for it except for breakable animal. Once they died, the skeleton was very fragile. So apart. wave action or another animal going nearby mm -hmm. would just break them apart, shatter them, and you get all these little columns, these little bits of the stem would break apart, and you find little sections that, well, look like Cheerios. Museums the world over come to Indiana to try and find these crinoids. Um, we have some of the best known deposits in the world. In fact, I think the state fossil is a crinoid. Perfect, uh, yep. It's uh, Cyanthrocrinites multibrachiatus. You get an A-plus for the day, that's, that's perfect. One. And these brachiopods right next to it are beautiful. But I have to ask you, this is a strange looking thing, and is that a dinosaur? Is that a, a marine fossil? I actually love this piece. It comes from Shelbyville, and when people bring it in, or when people see it, they automatically assume it's a dinosaur, but actually mm -hmm. it's much later. It's, um, it's from a large mammal. It's from a mammoth. A it's, mammoth. It's a mammoth tooth. Oh, a singer, wow. single molar from a mammoth. And that's from Indiana. From Indiana. But that is, these are very old, and dinosaurs are very old, but this is relatively new. Actually pretty young. It's Pleistocene. That's an era that's 2 million to about 15,000 years ago. So this is at the very end of the Pleistocene. So it's in thousands of years instead of millions like we're used to. So not all Indiana fossils are sea animals. Indiana was inhabited with giant land animals only a few thousand years ago. These fossils are rare and can be hard to find, but you can find your own Indiana fossils wherever you see layers of limestone.